Hi, this is Austin Wintry once again. This is the Game Maker's Notebook, and today I have the incredible joy of talking with Supergiant's luminary composer, Darren Korb. We recorded this during PAX 2019 in the morning after, in every sense, of the 10th anniversary Supergiant retrospective concert, uh, wherein we got to revisit Darren's uh, sort of greatest hits over the last 10 years. So we spoke at length about that and uh, how basically he has a cartoonishly perfect life uh, writing music that's amazing for a company that's amazing for games that are amazing and all the first drafts make it through and no one ever gives him feedback and life is incredible. So it was a wonderful conversation and I hope you enjoy. Welcome to The Game Maker's Notebook, a podcast featuring a series of in-depth one-on-one conversations between game makers providing a thoughtful, intimate perspective on the business and craft of interactive entertainment. The Game Maker's Notebook is presented by the Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences, a member-driven organization dedicated to the recognition and advancement of interactive entertainment. Oh, Darren Korb. Hello. Alive. Yes. Survived quite something last night. Yes, it was quite something. Yes. And I live. I live. I think uh, by the time this is audible to people, this will be will be on to new pastures because it's usually a little bit of a you know couple month yeah. delay. Um, but safe to say last night was one of the best nights of life. Yeah. Same. Of all time. Agreed. Ditto. Um and so why don't we just that that's like our that's like our clickbait headline yeah. for this interview. So let's <laughs> yeah. just have integrity and go straight into it instead of yeah. In after Save the break, the end. yeah, we're yeah at eleven o'clock exactly. <laughs> what you don't know about last night's concert could kill yeah. you. Stay tuned. Uh, um, <laughs> so yeah, I think uh, we can kind of work backwards. I think because I'd love to just unpack your yeah. your thoughts on. Game scoring, music in general. You yeah. you come from a different musical background than most of our community. Yeah. Um, and last night, that was despite the fact that we were closer to my wheelhouse. I felt like your background and all that you do was so thoroughly on display, and awesome. it was just absolutely one of the most awesome things ever. So, um, we're here at PAX celebrating what? So today, this day, September 1st, is the 10-year anniversary of Supergiant Games existing. So How that, are they defined? Uh, this is such a nerdy question, but how are they defining that? Is that like... It's the day the, that they the, like... The LLC paperwork went in the mail? <laughs> I think it was the day that Amir and Gavin started work on Bastion, you know. Got it. And it it was the first day. I The, fir- the day that like... They were, yeah, I think it was probably, I'm not sure if it was a partnership or an LP or something, whatever it was at first. It was like the first day it was a thing. It was just Amir and Gavin and they were like, started working on Bastion and Amir's mom's living room. Uh, <laughs> wow. Like today, 10 years ago. That's funny. Yeah. Um, so that's what we're celebrating. And, and last night we did a concert that was a sort of a 10 year celebration that had it was music from all the games and. Um, you know this, but I'm saying this for the benefit of the. No, my, I'm. This is all. Uh, the pod- I'm, I'm absorbing <laughs> the uh, fresh people. information here <laughs> for the podcast people. The so it's uh yeah we were, did a concert with music from all the games, uh at the Paramount Theater, which is crazy, with, with a rather a, storied yeah venue here a in Seattle, big beautiful old venue, you know, uh, and with a 13 piece chamber orchestra that you conducted. And Ashley Barrett sang, and uh, and I sang, and we we did some of the tunes, all you know, tunes from all the games, and yeah, it was a real emotional night for me, for sure. It was it was a it was a ton of fun, and just seemed, seemed you know seemed hopefully to come across as a celebration of the just we're just pleased to have existed for ten years and hope to exist <laughs> for more years. <laughs> yeah, pleased uh, to say the least. Uh, I mean, it really it was ecstatic, and it's worth saying that 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 uh, theater has a capacity of almost 3000 people and and it was basically full. Yeah. I don't know I don't know where the line was, yeah. but the guys told us, you know, 
Yeah. And then the I swear to God, every one of those people wanted something signed afterward yeah. because <laughs> that was that was probably the most long lasting and always enthusiastic yeah. signing line I've ever seen. Yes, like even same. the seven thousandth person who had been in line for three hours or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I mean we left it. What? 10, we left, I'd say it was 30, 11, 11, something like that. I think that? we finished signing around 11. We got to signing at like 9, I don't know. 9 something? Yeah, 9 something. Nine, we went nine there 40. pretty fast. It was right like 9 45. We were there signing. Yeah. And we we got, I'm surprised it was only. Yeah, actually, an now hour you're saying time. that, I'm we, like, it felt like, it felt like we were there for days. It was a crazy, crazy line, but we were flying. That's we true. were signing stuff so fast. You were, you were, uh, your efficiency of signing. Cow. I, I, it's funny because I had this thought. I, I, I really, I loved, I get, I enjoy the kind of this yeah. the German side of me is like, ooh, the machine is running well. I'm happy. But, uh, but at the same time, I, I was trying to balance it with like when people are coming yeah. up, you don't want to be like, take a number. Yeah. Uh, no, of course. Your I mean, schmear is ready. Of course. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I think so. And but because people were just so it's it's always amazing when they say things like um, the, I'm trying to think of how I heard it phrased. Yeah. Of variations on like, you know, thank you for doing this. Yeah. As if as if we were singing or playing. Right at them. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And that, to me, that's just the best that you could hear. Yeah, you know, and, absolutely. It was, and I was just, to be clear, I was basking in the afterglow <laughs> of what you did. I, I don't want to take any credit. Uh, uh, no, uh, it, I, I'm, I'm very honored to have played a role in it. But, um, but yeah, so a musical retrospective celebrating yeah. the last 10 years, um, reverse chronologically, Hades, Pyre, yeah. Transistor, and Bastion. Yeah. Um, and it's always funny how you know, people seem to know and, and really dig all those. Yeah. But there's something about once you guys start build that wall yeah. that the audience just yeah. exploded. I think that was like the the only one that got an audible like cheer when it started. On the downbeat. On yeah. those like boom, you yeah. know, right on the downbeat. Yeah. Yeah. It's a perfect yeah. way to end the show. Yeah. I mean it, yeah. it gives me it gives me yeah. goosebumps. Yeah. And yeah. seriously, yeah. uh because it just did. Because yeah. I I I love that it's like all of this and the big booth and you know over on the show yeah. floor and yeah. like the shirt you're wearing yeah, and yeah, all yeah, this yeah. none of that if this song and yeah. its role within that game yeah. uh didn't happen none of this the last 10 years the majority of the last 10 years would not have been a thing and you could feel the audience like yes those those first you know <laughs> boom, 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 boom. that's yeah. why we're here in a yeah. way and not yeah, yeah, and yeah. not in a way that's dismissive of all the material sense so yeah. how that how that i mean you've played shows of this stuff before oh, yeah, for so sure. how 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 did this kind of uh relate to those i don't mean to say rank or compare but just sort well, of relative to the the kind of acoustic yeah. set of you and on the guitar and the two of you singing i mean it, it's a whole different a whole different thing it really is because you know ashley and i have done a handful of sets where it's like me playing guitar and the both of us singing and that's it basically and uh and that's really fun it's really casual it's pretty intimate and it's like really exposed so there's like almost more pressure to like have <laughs> perfect vocals yeah so um i was like as an aside super shocked that i was not like nervous i wasn't like super <laughs> nervy or terrified or anything like I was like yeah you seemed in your element I was kind of from fine where I was. somehow and <laughs> yeah and usually I'm you know I have some nerves at least for the first couple of songs and this one I was just like I don't know it just the nerves never really kicked in <laughs> you know it's like waiting for that I was like you're gonna have a freak out like on yeah, Wednesday yeah, like, <laughs> it's just gonna suddenly <laughs> terrified meltdown uh but I think part of it is that this actually I have no experience doing an orchestral anything at all and I have experience performing in bands and stuff and this wasn't like that, but it was like me doing musical theater, which I did a bunch as a kid yeah. and a teenager. So, so I was like, oh, okay, I can, I kind of know what this is. Like yeah. I felt, I felt I was like, okay, I kind of, I get, it. I can, I can just lean into that. And, yeah, yeah. Some people really struggle with that translation. Yeah. Like if they've played in a band, yeah. you know, for 20 years yeah. and then they do some kind of orchestra, yeah. get, you know, like. Like someone like Weird Al or Tenacious D, we've, spoke, we've spoken <laughs> yeah, about them yeah. uh, at, at great lengths, and they, they came up uh, a lot yesterday with yeah. Danny B. Yeah. That's the kind of performer that you know they'll do 20 years as a band, yeah. and then with an orchestra, it's yeah. a very disorienting yeah. thing because yeah. they're so used to this sort of psychic communication amongst yeah. the band members. Yeah. Um, 
tying this to the relevance of the uh, sorry yes. of the game makers. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, believe me, I want to unpack last night for yeah. for the next two hours. Yeah. Uh, it was so incredible to yeah. see how much those games have meant to people because these are yeah. these are indie games. Now yeah. they're they're rather singularly successful indie games, but like you don't see a transistor billboard. On, that's half of a skyscraper. You do like not. at E3 that when you know that yeah. when Doom or yeah. or you yeah. know Modern Warfare or yeah. something is you know the ad campaigns cost more than the ten year aggregate operating budget of yes uh, Super Giant. Yeah. I'm guessing probably yes. Um, I would I suspect I it's don't a know. <laughs> it's a crazy thing and yeah. yet there's no shortage of reaching just millions of people and and at any given moment you know it it packs. Yeah. thousands yeah um as someone who obviously started in musically and like you said musical theater yeah. and in the record world what yeah. what is that how does your brain kind of square all that the 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 way in which the music is reaching folks and that also just as an aside the the kind of the sort of uh almost uh paradox in a mm -hmm. way of being like very niche and yet extremely known it's a it's an odd blend, but you guys yeah. are really in that pocket. I think. Yeah, it's super weird. Uh, I, I, my sort of take on the musical side of that. Yeah, it's is, two kind of unrelated questions. Yeah, it's kind of two things, right? It's like, as far as the response people seem to have to the music, I almost, I almost feel a little bit because I, you know, I did a bunch of stuff on my own trying to just kind of write songs for you know, for no, no particular, just for it to be a songwriter and to perform and stuff like that before this. And, and I almost feel like it's cheating because the games give me sort of like a, they like sneak my music to people and yeah. give, force them to have an emotional connection with it. Yeah. That's not, kind of unfair. I, no, I totally, you know? I totally get it. So I, I, I almost feel like it's cheating a little bit. Um, uh, because, you know, I did plenty of stuff before Bastion that I was equally excited about musically but nobody heard it or when they heard it, they're like, yeah, cool. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it's, you can't, I feel like as composers, we yeah. always, we simultaneously bank on it and yeah. also feel a little guilty about it yeah. or, or, or like you said, yeah. uh, skeezy as if we're, as if we're cheating that, yeah. that we get to ride the coattails of an emotional experience that yeah. is being created by many different people. Yes. But then, yeah. but then there's so often this like, yeah, I love that game because of the music yeah. and there's yeah. this, thing in your head going well <laughs> it's kind of i mean like it goes both ways yeah, like, i'm sure I think, it goes both. Yeah, i think I you suspect. love the music in part because you were loving the yeah, game yeah. you know like it's hard yeah. to figure out which way yeah. that goes for sure no and it, so that's anyway that's just something i think about but it's not it's you know no no judgment on that but it's just uh it's interesting to me and then as far as you know being sort of no widely known in a very specific area um, yeah, it's, it's, I don't really, it's incredible. I, I consider us myself and us as a company, extremely just lucky to have had multiple games that have meant a lot to people or had some amount of success independently. I mean, you know, I, I realize that as like a one in a billion kind of thing Absolutely. to be able to pull off once at all, yeah. let, let alone multiple times. So, 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 and we really like on team, all of us do not take it for granted. Like we, we are, you know, we're like, whenever we're launching a thing, we're like, all right, you know, how, how long until we run out of money? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we're, <laughs> like how, how long can we keep doing this? You know? And that's all the reason we do it is so we can keep doing it. I mean, we, we, we're doing it because it's something that we love, love, love to do. And the we've been lucky enough that the games have done well enough that we've been able to keep doing it and that's and that's the that's really the thing and so and these are doesn't super giant self publish yes super like Giants. you're you're yeah. truly we, yeah completely and totally independent yeah warner brothers helped us publish uh, and dis distribute mostly bastion um at the time the main reason we signed with them we were i mean we were also just starting out in small but i think the main reason was that on xbox live arcade you you weren't allowed to self-publish at ah, the time. Okay, got it. You had to, and we wanted to be on Xbox Live Arcade. So uh, does Warner that mean they were involved in Steam as well? Like it was an all-in deal, yeah, but they, with yes. XBLA as yeah, kind of the target. Yeah. 
Yeah, I never knew that. Yep. Um, and but but at post Bastion, we all the all the rest of the games have been self published. Yeah. Yeah, and for the scale of of um, production and 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 artistry and all that, that's that is amazing to to be able to just take the company just take on all that risk itself. Yeah. Um, how big is it again? Uh, Super giant at this point. So right now, I kind think of we're core team, roughly around seventeen, which is the biggest, more or less the biggest we've been. Um, we uh, we were seven on Bastion, and then about twelve on Transistor and Pyre, mm. and then and now we're at like around seventeen. Um, and yeah, we're gonna you know we, I think the plan, as far as I know, is not to grow much anymore and i mean unless there's some specific need right um for that but i feel like we're sort of around our sort of goal it size. feels like a company that has been made made very wise uh business decisions in that sense like yeah. no overextension no sort of wild left turns that just burn the thing down and yeah. squander all that was gained like sure. it seems like it's very measured but not without there's no it's not that there's a lack of ambition it's yeah. just Seems calculated and very smart. And this, the crazy thing to me is, it's like all aren't aren't all you like kind of the core group essentially childhood friends? Yeah, that's um, the part that yeah. blows me away because <laughs> usually these teams are carefully constructed, yeah. like Mission Impossible, you know, where they're like, we need the best code cracker, yeah, yeah, and they're yeah, from yeah. Morocco, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, they yeah, haven't yeah, been yeah. seen in five years, and like, yeah. but you're all like. Yeah, we were buddies. Then we just became this industry leaders, <laughs> like as a little cabal. How, how does that even happen? So yeah, I mean, so a lot of the all of the people we've hired since Bastion, more or less, are we didn't had to come from that specific town. And no, no, we didn't. We didn't know in advance. But but a lot of the Bastion crew were in one way or another connected to Amir Rao, who's the one of the co-founders. Um, and how do you and he yeah, so know each other? Amir and I, Amir and I met when we were eight years old. Um, <laughs> That's so insane. We went to elementary and middle school together. And uh, where was this? This was in San Jose, California. And uh, we played in bands together, all you know, from middle school, high school, and some of college. We, we what did he play? Drums. Does he still ever play? I. Keep trying to get him to do it, and he doesn't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Uh, that, I really want him to. I, I, yeah, you've had but ten he, years to wear him down. I guess I, he won't. He's very strong willed. Um, but uh, but I really would. Yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to dance jam with him again. But he's 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 like how amazing opposed. would it have been if last night he came out on stage as a little surprise and joined I our orchestra? I would have liked that. I would have shed tears. I think I would have liked that as well. But um, but no, he doesn't play anymore. He doesn't play anymore. He, he gave it up. Yeah, I don't know why. It's anyway, a vice. Yeah. But uh, so since eight years old and played together all through, did you go to the same college? So I went to NYU and he went to Columbia. So we both went to New York colleges. Wow. Was that like, were you guys sufficiently close that that was kind of planned? Like the idea was let's try to go and be proximate to each other somewhere? You know, we were definitely that close, but we didn't plan. It's like he, he had done a summer workshop at Columbia and loved it. I had visited New York a bunch and like was really enamored of, uh, this particular program at NYU Gallatin mm -hmm. School, uh, just because of the sort of freedom of how you got to kind of do whatever you wanted there as an individual. What years were you there? I was there uh, 2002 to 2006 ish. So like I, I did like an extra semester because I took some time off. Um, it's never dawned on me that we were at NYU at yeah, the same time. At the time. same time, yeah. Did we, we over, talk about that. And yeah, I we had. We, yeah, yeah, we did. Well, yeah. good. I'm glad that's on the uh, recording. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we, it, it's, we overlap that. like two years, right? While yeah. You went there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, we didn't, uh, didn't know each other at the time. Let me space that. Uh, I'm not but, qualified to handle these <laughs> interviews. Um, but, but, so NYU yeah. and Columbia. Were you, so were you guys able to keep yeah, we hung out with stuff. We hung out some. We played some music a little bit in college. You know, I was still trying to like keep the mute band going or whatever. It was <laughs> yeah. like not. It didn't. It was hard. Uh, what was the band called? Uh, initially, it was called Icarus, and then and then later it was called Furley. <laughs> Furley. <laughs> yeah, I was, that... I was obsessed with Three's Company. I don't yeah. know. It's not a good band name <laughs> for that. For the kind of a band we were, it's like a silly band name for a. It was like a. It was like a singer songwritery like you know. Not not silly band. Um, oh, okay, well, fair <clears throat> enough. And and then uh, oh, and so and also, you know, Logan and Lemire played soccer together when they were like twelve. Logan and I met on the first day of high school. We went to the same high school. That's crazy. And we did improv comedy and plays together all through high school. 
And it's worth explaining who Logan is. Logan is our sort of voice actor in residence at Supergiant. He does characters in all of our games, the narrator in Bastion, the sword and transistor, the announcer in Pyre. He does Hades in Hades. He does it and, and in addition he's, to like tons awesome. of other characters. Yeah, his voice is wonderful. He's a great actor. Um, and we've been buddies forever um, since the first day of high school. Uh, and he also went to a New York college. He went to Fordham, the one in, in mm -hmm. Manhattan. Mm -hmm. So the three of us all kind of went to New York and, and would hang out. It's unbelievable. And, yeah. um, and at the time that Bastion, that that Amir was co-founding Supergiant, Logan and I were roommates uh, in Brooklyn. We'd finished college and moved out and, you know, we we're living in Williamsburg. Um, and... Uh, yeah, so, and the other people from Supergiant know Amir through, he was working at EA with Gavin and Greg, and I think they were also roommates at some point in LA, working at EA LA on, on the Command and Conquer series. And Andrew and Amir had done an internship together in Florida, working on, working on Superman Returns. Wow. I believe the, the, the <laughs> Zack Singer movie, or Brian the, Singer movie? The, the video game. Uh, Tie oh, in. Oh, oh. The video game tie in for that movie. Uh, and in that, Florida? Yeah, it's some studio in like Orlando or something. And I not know anything about that. I, yeah. Uh, and, and that's where they met. And then they were also roommates. And when Andrew was working at Infinity Ward, you know, on, on Modern Warfare and uh, yeah. you know, Modern Warfare 2. And then, um, and so that's, yeah. And then Jen was a friend of a friend, basically like this Alex Ahad, one of the co-creators of Skullgirls. Mm -hmm. uh, he went to high school with Logan and myself and was a friend of ours. And uh, we were trying to find an artist and Alex recommended Jen. They were working at Gaia together. And that's how, that's how we got a hold of Jen. It's so crazy how small the sort of circle was that yep. drew from, because it's not surprising when people make a thing no. from their immediate proximate people. No. It's really something else, though, when it's like this all-star team. It's just <laughs> like, oh, yeah, well, we just knew each other. It's like you're from some kind of <laughs> Hunger Games-like thing that called you and, and, and only the best survived. So then, of course, they would be an all-star team in a kind of Darwinistic way. But no, it's just like luck kind of uh, happenstance, I guess, brought together. A group, even Ashley, uh, yeah, you yes, said yeah. is because I I had thought just surely either you guys were in a band together uh, or you just went looking for somebody because uh, again yeah. it's like her voice seems so she's got this perfect um, for the way you write yeah. she has that perfect blend of like she can tilt to the sort of purity of a pop star but yeah. then she can also do this very smoky yeah sort of more sort of down and dirty sound yeah. that's almost like a gospel singer in yeah. a way yeah um and it's so it's it's like the musical voice of logan's yeah. voice yeah 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 um that's uh, awesome. yeah. and to me you know and i'm and i desperately try not to just project onto it all yeah. but i remember i listened to it and it's just it's 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 alchemy uh how well it all comes together so so yeah what was the connection with her again in yes. terms of all the other crazy so yeah so that's another cra stuff? crazy one actually she is also from the bay area um and we not at the exact same time but i did some shows with san jose children's musical theater you were 25 was, and it was very weird <laughs> i was probably eight nine and ten when i did those shows or something like that or yeah i think and then she like the following year started doing a bunch of plays there. Mm. And so we had a bunch of mutual friends from that thing who had all gone to New York and were doing theater and whatever, and a bunch of them. And she had also moved to New York after she finished school. And I was writing a musical with my brother and we did a demo recording for it. And we were looking for somebody with a particular kind of voice and she was recommended to us by our mutual friends. I worked with her on that and she killed it. It was awesome. And so when I was working on Bastion and writing a song for a female singer, I thought, well, who's going to, you know, who's going to look no further than the children's the theater department. I'd worked with her before. She was awesome. She was local. Like I knew her, you know, <laughs> like it ticked all the boxes, yeah. you know, um, she could like come and record this, these vocals in my closet. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, I want to get into, I want to get into that in a minute yeah. because your GDC talk about Bastion, yeah. however many years ago now. Yeah, it's 2012, 
I think I do that. I think I try to never be guilty of this, but I bet I think there's a certain amount of you you showing up and just like redefining for us all how it ought to be done. (laughs) It's probably how a lot of the kind of um, it's probably how a lot of the sort of mainstream Hollywood composers felt when Danny Elfman arrived. Uh Because here's this guy from this really esoteric band. Yeah. Who is writing music that can go toe to toe with any of them, oh, but yeah. Yeah. but sounds nothing like them. Yeah, and and he's hooked up with this director that's making movies that's totally unlike yeah. all the other. You know this yeah. like this like washed out Disney animator who's yeah. doing the weirdest stop motion <laughs> stuff, and yeah. um, and so. Uh, I remember distinctly sitting next to uh, Gary Scheiman, who yeah. I've who I've uh, interviewed on this as well. Yeah. Uh, Bioshock, yeah, it's incredible, yeah, it's incredible. Uh, but very emblematic. You know, I'm I'm in kind of a weird spot in terms of my career is kind of all over the place. But Gary, you know, he has he's like a mainstay in my mind. Yeah. I mean, he has worked on some of the biggest franchises and and some of the most celebrated scores, especially obviously Bioshock. And we were sitting next to each other, and I, and I, I will, I will kind of slightly mythologize the story. But we were basically sitting there, arms folded, like, yeah. "All right, let's see what's this all about." Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, of course, neither of us were actually like that, but yeah, it was yeah. definitely this, like, "Who's this Darren? This guy who's like walking in, and he's all smiley, and he's got this crazy mutton chops." And uh, and then it was like, by the when you got to the point of. And then, yeah, I just started recording Logan in my closet. It was, it, yeah. it was so charming. And then, and, and also, you you pulled up like your logic sessions yeah. in that talk. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I remember Gary and I both having this transformative kind of like, God damn, does this guy know what he's doing? And what he has <laughs> done with effectively no resources yeah, is yeah. unreal. Because Bastion, you know, it's one of those – you have to allow for the idea that there can be this runaway hit that's just kind of it hits the nerve somehow yeah. but there's nothing that exciting about it yeah. you know it's it's like the like the uh, the the what's the stupid thing you know the dun 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 dun, dun, dun on youtube oh, baby shark yes yeah. like i'm familiar something... with baby shark yeah i guess yeah. Yes, as a as a as someone as, who has spawned recently yeah. yeah yeah i um that's one of those where i will never understand how things like that kind of take flight yeah. i won't understand it artistically yeah. psychologically and I, it's not that i'm trying to sound dismissive or that i think it's bad yeah it's just sometimes you see a great thing yeah. and you go i get it that yeah. thing is genuinely great yeah and then other times i go well i'm glad it's making people happy but it's beyond me i don't yeah. get it yeah so it was one of those where i hadn't played bastion and yeah. i'd only barely heard the music so i wasn't sure where it was gonna fall and uh and then walk in and was just like after that hour was over, it was like, well, I'm converted. This is insane. <laughs> um, well, that's very, very nice of you to describe it. That I, I, that is very kind. But but the, the, I said I say all that as a setup to uh, like, were you because you're a gamer also. That oh, yeah. was the other part that, that you know, yeah. there's a lot of composers who aren't really that. And you yeah. can we, we can we can have nerdy conversations oh, with yeah. the best of them about all kinds of gaming minutia. And I didn't know that about you at the time. Yeah. And stereotypically you didn't look the part. Yeah. So it was like um ha- I'm just trying to wrap my brain around how all these different threads could come together that you could be this sort of musical theater savvy uh singer songwriter uh you know kind of experienced nerdy gamer who yeah. happens to be childhood friends with like the next <laughs> great visionary indie developers it's just so remarkable but how how did that because it sounded like you didn't really necessarily have game music ambitions before the super giant thing sort of came to be is no. that accurate yeah it is i mean i just didn't i i didn't understand that it was a thing that i could do for a job like i just had no idea like i knew people did it I was like, well, I can't do that. You know, I just didn't. Was I, film scoring ever of interest? Not really. I just, I didn't think I could do that either. I mean, I, scoring things wasn't something that I had really any experience with going into Bastion at all. I mean, I, I had done a couple of tiny little, like I did a, I did a few um, short little one minute, you know, pieces for like some, you know, like an infomercial spot or whatever. Cause my brother's an editor and he like oh, got okay. me a hookup to like try, you know, yeah, to like, you know, and I did, I wrote a song for an indie movie, um, but, but I, I had done no scoring really, really more or less. Um, so, uh, what on earth may, other than just like, yeah, we played music together. What made Amir and the crew basically go, you, 
do all this stuff you're not qualified for. Well, I think he that's something that I ask myself sometimes. I he he <laughs> the ultimate we, we worked together is. creatively a bunch. We've been playing D and D together since we were little kids. We'd we'd, you know, kind of dabbled in movie making together and just like fun, you know, whatever creative projects together over the years and worked in bands and collaborated and stuff. And he for whatever reason thought I could do it. He just and and sort of worst case scenario is then I can't do it and right, <laughs> they just get somebody else to do it. But he knew me and we were friends and he thought I could do it. Did um, you have any doubts of yourself being able to do it? I mean, sure. Like I, I didn't, I just sort of said, I just said yes, because I was like, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Whether I can do it or not, I'm going to do it because this is a, of course I want to do this. This is a, it makes perfect, like, duh. Why didn't I think of that? And I and I was just trying to figure out I was trying to sort of figure out how I could do it, but I knew I was gonna do it. <laughs> now yeah. was it initially offered as a salaried or like a, I mean, I guess they didn't have sort of the capital for a, no. that kind of structure. Yeah, no, but we, was it yeah. like how was it approached in that way? Because you're definitely an in-house person. Yeah. So what was the sort of initial Yeah, condition? I think initially like at the towards the beginning of Bastion, it was more like, you know, we need some pieces for this kind of thing. We need like some sound effects for this kind of thing. They give me sort of like a, you know, they sort of prescribe what they needed and I would make it. And, but I, but I, but I had access to the game and everything, all the prototypes and everything. I was playing it the whole time. Like from mm -hmm. the first, the first time they had a little player playable prototype, I was playing it and, you know, trying to figure out what I could put in there to enhance it. And, and, um, and yeah, so it was just sort of on a, you know, contract basis at the beginning. And then eventually I think it was either towards the end of Bastion or right after Bastion that I became sort of in-house technically. Right. On paper, there yeah. wasn't, there wasn't yeah. much of an in-house to be yet at that yeah. point. I mean, I was, I was in-house, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I was in-house from the beginning, but um, no, but that's why yeah, I was just yeah, yeah. curious how they, it, cause, because I asked because especially yesterday talking with Danny, yeah. um, the notion of the the give and take, the trade offs between a salary yeah. and exclusive position—it's almost like someone who's deciding to get married or mm -hmm. not. We're like, okay, there's going to be a lot of um, benefits to this, uh, but there's no there's undoubtedly sacrifices that mm. are also being made, and and it's just sort of like doing doing the the internal uh, emotional math on that. And to me, a staff position is kind of similar, and so you you had to make this choice somewhere along the road that this is going to be how I'm spending my time. Yeah. And if it just kind of cropped up and you said, oh, I can do this, yeah. it must have initially not been presented that way. It was like, I can do this, but I'm also going to be doing albums or theater. Or yeah. Whatever. No, for sure. I mean, I, I was at the beginning while working on Bastion, you know, just to sort of make ends meet because that wasn't, you know, we were, we were all working real cheap on Bastion just to like try to make sure that the game got finished and we had enough time to make it. Um, I was like, I had a little, uh, I was working with my friend, uh, doing stuff for the rock band network, <laughs> which is, was a thing where you could like make, you could like make your own tracks and put them in rock band and, and sell them. I like it was not, a little store. I, yeah. I did little, not know that existed. Yeah. It was a little marketplace. And so my friend and I had a little company where he had a company. I started one and then I kind of got, I worked for him instead because it was easier. Um, <laughs> where where we would like people would pay us to like chart bands would pay us to chart their music and put it in rock band and get it through the whole wow. peer review process and everything so is that how you were kind of surviving before fully fully surviving from it Supergiant? helped it, it helped i mean i was until i started working at super giant um and and doing that that's when i started to like first finally make ends meet i was like getting help from my parents and i was just like you know trying to i was like trying to be a producer and songwriter i was like interning in a recording studio and not getting paid and just you know I was, yeah, just, yeah. I was just trying to like make music work any way i could um like i'm just i know i'm doing something in music i want it to be something on the production side of music and the writing side of music i had no idea what it was going to be and i was and or and performing mixed in there somewhere I was doing some music, you know, kind of like hired gun gigs for a couple of bucks here and mm -hmm. there, like playing guitar and whatever for right. people um, and some little producing gigs. Um, you know, but when I got paid, I was like 
oh man, can you believe this person's paying me yeah. to like do <laughs> this? I was like, man, this is this amazing. Um, it's still pretty amazing. <laughs> it is. It is still amazing. Yeah. I love. I know. But 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 the, the there's less novelty now. <laughs> but that's true. But but there was certainly novelty to it at the beginning, and it was like whoa. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I think that was it. I mean, and so once I started doing, you know, between the the super giant stuff at the beginning, and then doing the kind of rock band network stuff on the side, and then I did a little bit of producing. I was just still trying to, you know, whatever I could to just kind of make ends meet. Um, but then at some point, it was like, okay, you know, I guess I guess after Bastion came out, yeah, the idea of this is now going to be a, a your salaried position, yeah, and so this is like that marriage, uh, you know, yeah. cross, yeah, cross street, yeah, um, and deciding where to go. Um, did you wrestle with that? The idea of like, well, I'm going to, a lot of these other pursuits that I've been dabbling in, or even just, you know, gigging and stuff, yeah. I, you would be limiting a lot, uh, not that you're forbidden, but you yeah. would be, you know, you'd be closing a lot of doors in exchange for opening up a, a really exciting one. But did you, yeah. did you grapple with that decision? Not at all. I mean, and I, and I didn't really see it that way either. I mean, I, I, because, you know, the only thing, the only thing that, that I'm basically not totally free to do is just like work on other games. All right. Specifically, which is fine. Like I have no, you know, I'm like, I just want to make games with these humans that I'm making games with. Like, that's what I want. Um, so yeah, I didn't really have to think about it. I mean, it was, and it, has no one ever approached you yeah, with a no, game I, yeah, that yeah. you, that you were like in another universe. I I'm desperate to do this. No, nothing, like no nothing. one's dropped some, thing that you're and then later it came out and you saw the finished product like oh man i wish i'd been part of that not really i've gotten some requests for to 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 work on stuff but nothing that nothing that i'm like um there's one game that i got approached to do i didn't like i didn't really want to do it necessarily but then it came out and i really loved the game <laughs> but that was cool but so i was you are you are i don't you know i don't i don't want to say but all um, right fair enough but um i'm i'm gonna i'll tell you later <laughs> i'm gonna toss and turn trying to figure out that one i'll tell you later but um my version of that for what it's worth is that i was originally um approached for monument valley yeah um, oh, and yeah. i was i was just too there was just too much going on yeah, at, yeah. The, at that particular moment yeah. and um and then later when it came out and I played it, I was like, my heart broke. Yeah, I was like, yeah, what a uh, beautiful, yeah. perfect game. Yeah, that game's awesome. Um, and, uh, and I mean, and, and it all turned out great. Yeah. Just, it's not like there's any ill will. And I yeah. love those guys. Yeah. Um, uh, but it was one of those that I was like, man, I yeah. should have found the time somehow. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And uh, but, but but it's yeah, how life is, yeah. you know. But, but so I, I mean, I yeah, I, I didn't really see it as a sort of a choice between you know, opportunity and this secure thing. It was more like, this is the best thing that's happened to me in my life. And I love it. i just want to do this forever. And, and it's like, now I can, you know? Um, yeah. and, and then, um, and it, also I still, you know, I still do side projects and non game related music stuff, which is like where a lot of my musical interests are also. So that sort of, it works out fine. I mean, I still, when I can work on projects with my this, a band or two, and you know, do do that kind of stuff, and you know, if you know the 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 main thing that that prevents me from doing other stuff is just like I can't allow it to to monopolize my time. Yeah, basically, of course. Um, but you're, I, I imagine you're free to somewhat self regulate your yeah schedule. Yeah, for the most part, as long as I get everything done and 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 schedule myself. I mean, I have a lot these days. You know, we're really I think cranking on all cylinders mm. uh firing all cylinders for for hades we're really like put like the sort of a, amount of content that we're generating and the time in which we're doing it is like kind of mind-blowing to me <laughs> as someone who's worked on all of our games yeah. and can like can see how much like how much more like awesome stuff is being cranked out for this game it's like really so uh, is this is it fair to say this is the the most ambitious so far I, I mean, as far as total ambition goes, I'm not sure. Like, Pyre was, like, really ambitious and weird for... for Part weird. of the, though, I think, is just yeah. the, the extreme... Pyre is... Every review of that game started with, I don't know what this is. Yeah, yeah. And so there's a certain ambition baked into that. But then yes. there's also just a production ambition yes. of, like, the scope of what has to yeah. be made. Assets yeah. and stuff. Yeah, no, I think this game... 
already by far is our biggest game like without like with question a year to go or whatever yeah with we yeah with a lot of time left in pr in production still we we already have more content in just about every imaginable way than all the other including games. musically in terms of time it's like close to pyre and i've been working on it for like a year less than i worked on pyre you know so <laughs> and, and what is that time like you mean like runtime like runtime i mean it in terms of tracks, there's like 22 tracks right now, which is not, Pyre ended up having like 39, but a lot of those are like one minute things. This this has like a bunch of like 10 minute pieces, you know, because of the nature of how the music um, is implemented in the game. Like mm -hmm. there's a ton of like long, long pieces um, <clears throat> that go a lot of different places. So, um, so I would say in terms of like runtime of music, there's, it's getting, I mean, it's over two hours for sure. Um, Pyre was about just shy of three hours of music, I believe. Um, wow, I did not remember that. Yeah, Pyre was like, you know, two hours and 50 some minutes, I think. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I forget. But yeah. That's nuts. Yeah. Just out of care, how does that relate to <clears throat> Bastion and Transistor then? Bastion was about an hour. Uh, Transistor was like an hour 12 or something like that. So it was a big giant step up for Pyre. Then. Oh yeah, uh, and big jump. I, I didn't realize yeah. it was that yeah. kind of non-linear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's um, that's yeah. nuts. Yeah. I, 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 pivoting slightly. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you're at, you your title is yeah. audio director. Correct. Now that is a title that traditionally means someone who is overseeing. Music typically audio directors are not also the composer. They are usually responsible yes. for hiring yeah. and managing the composer. But yeah. in your case, uh, not so much. Yep. Um, it's gonna all big scandal in a few years when it turns out you're <laughs> hiring ghostwriters. You right. don't even yes. know anything. You've never sure. even held a guitar. <laughs> um, mutton chops are velcroed on yeah. your face. <laughs> um, no. So um, um, tip also sound design which again yep. usually the audio director would be overseeing outsourced sound design yep. and then likewise dialogue yep. implementation editing sometimes they're even directing yes. the dialogue themselves yep. so you truly do, you there's no outsourcing right you're doing everything yeah pretty much i mean the the only on transistor we outsourced a little bit of sound design cuz i had a baby during that game and just like couldn't finish all the so work. So basically, you weren't fully committed. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't fully committed. Um, it was, I, it's worth pointing mm. out that last night there was an adorable uh, <laughs> parent-child moment yeah. uh, in the show. The audience, like, rapturous applause. And then right as they were finishing, this little voice cries out, I love you, Daddy. Yeah, that was very cute. That he, was, has, that was, he has good timing, that little one. That Yeah, it was. It couldn't have couldn't yeah. timed it better because no. if it had been... One second earlier, yeah, uh, it would have been buried in the audience. Yeah, yeah. and if it had been one second uh, later, then you would have already started talking yeah. to set up the next piece, and yeah. I don't think anybody would have heard it. Yeah, and, and probably including you. Yeah, yep. It's really, uh, yeah, on the money. That kid has good timing. Ready does, for musical yeah. theater. Yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> uh, that um, was very sweet. So yeah, yeah, so you outsourced a little bit to compensate for yes. some uh, some bandwidth issues. Yes, and then and then on Pyre and currently we i outsource all of the voiceover editing so that means cleaning up the massively tedious yeah job. just sort of cleaning up the takes and getting them all prepped for me to render out and into the files that we you know use in the game um so you're directing <clears throat> the yeah, voiceover i direct the voiceover i make all the sounds uh implement a lot of the sounds greg kasavin it helps me with some implementation and he does a lot of that, the like uh, the actual like hooking up of sounds. And sometimes I'll do that. We kind of share that duty. And then um, I make the music and set it up in our middleware uh, and then kind of work with Greg on how to kind of implement the music dynamically and stuff like that and how to hook it up and where, and, and Greg generally does most of the music scripting. Got it. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the most part, you know, now, a lot of that, the reason I'm asking yeah. about it is because a lot of that stuff is the kind of thing that a, a, a record producer living in Brooklyn yeah. who's interning, an aspiring record producer yeah. who's interning <laughs> at studios yeah. and just desperately trying to make ends meet. Yeah. That is, it's not typically in the wheelhouse of someone like that to know dialogue editing or to have even heard of, you know, Wise or F mod yeah. that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and especially the sound design. That's the one yeah. that I really clue into. Yeah. I am not a 
sound design. Yeah. You know, I've I've done project like in Journey, the the chirps that yeah. the player sings yeah. through. Yeah. You know, that was a collaborative effort between me and the sound yeah. designer. And cool. so it's like my toes were dipped in that space. Yeah. I was helping edit, you know, the bird calls and yeah. stuff that we mixed with the flute to make the player sounds, Fun. that kind of yeah. stuff. But to full on, you know, foley swords and to edit, you know, footsteps and all yeah. that stuff. I mean, how did you you're obviously not an idiot. So, you know, you, 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 you pick well, up skills. You. I know. Well, you know, I'm full of praise today. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the, your ability to learn new skills is not in question, but that, that's still a pretty specialized field that I'm assuming, maybe I'm wrong. You didn't have anything in that. No. Yeah. I mean, I, before I didn't really have any experience there. I, how, how did you take to that? Did you, did you ever think like, okay, this is the trade off for being able to also do music for a living? No, or it's just you, like, you like it. Well, this is the work that needs to be done. I'm, and I'm the most qualified person on the team to do it. So I'm going to do it. <laughs> you know, I, I, I have a, I work with audio, so, you know, I, this is audio. <laughs> so, so almost so. like an extension of music. Yeah. I was just like, I'm just going to do this. Uh, and do you think that actually that's something I hadn't thought of. I'm curious. Do you think that you're, you because you have this very, you're as an all in one, it's going to mm. end up being a kind of top down where you're not working, um, against potentially a sound designer the way sometimes music is. Sure. Where they're almost pitted against each other yeah. trying to fill up the spectrum. Yeah, you know, yeah. you're able to conscientiously sort of design things knowing how it's all going to work together. Do you think that your music is influencing the sound design or vice versa? I think I don't know that I'm a good enough sound designer to execute that properly, <laughs> but okay, that I believe, but, uh, I know that I am coming from the same place with the sound design as I am with the music, which mm. is the whole goal of everything for me is to reinforce the tone of the game period. Like that is number one goal with every every ingredient that I touch. Yeah. Um, so it goes, you know, I want to enhance the world of the game and like put the player there more deeply with with every every aspect of it. So including music, sound design, you know, and all, all the motivations for those things are are the same. So so in that sense, you know, uh, hopefully it's sort of a holistic approach to all the audio in that it all has the same goal. Yeah. Um, but you know, and I, and I, and sometimes I will, you know, if I know the music for a certain thing is in a certain key and I want to make some musical components of sound effects, I'll put it in that key and I'll yeah, make sure it's sure. a scale. You know, I did some of that in Pyre and, um, but, um, but yeah, I think the, the way in which those, those are related for me is just that they're sort of driving at their sort of, you know, two prongs of attack at, you know, to trying to achieve the same result, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, related to that, then do you ever look back at the older work and think, my God, I did not know what I was doing. Like, does it haunt you the way that kind of like, you know, old songs, mm -hmm. you'll feel like I did not know how to write a song. Uh, and, and we can kind of, we, it's not uncommon for yeah. artists to be sort of tortured by their past work that feels underdeveloped. Do you, do you ever get any of that? Because especially Bastion, yeah, that was trial by fire. It was, yeah, it was stuff. definitely trial by fire. Yeah, I think you know, I don't really have, for better or worse, I don't have a ton of creative regrets with the video game stuff. <laughs> I don't know why. It just came out right. It is, well, it's just that I learned a bunch from all of it, and I was pleased. I'm pleased with how it came out. I feel like you know, I I play Bastion again, and then like some of the sound design stuff could be more polished. But again, we were working with like a really not powerful piece of middleware for that game. It was mm. free. It was exact. It was a Microsoft uh, middleware that was like free with the XBLA framework that we were, were the X, XNA framework that we were using. Ah, so, I mean, it was just like a really like not very powerful piece of software and it was very limited in its capabilities. And it was like, like learning a whole brand new language for me. I had no idea. Like it, it was clearly not made by audio people it was made by yeah computer people you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so um and i guess it was similar to a lot of the, the middleware sort of formatting where it's just like a list of cues essentially and there's no this is like oh okay Got um, it. so I, I had to have a lot of help just like i had ideas and then andrew had to go like research and then implement like put in like math 
for how to put, <laughs> put reverb and do whatever, you know, like yeah. just like put re- math, you know, the reverb, do calculate formula. reverb calculations. Yeah. And, yeah. But well, um, at least it could do something then. Yeah, no, we could do something, but like just like looping stuff cleanly, like could barely do that. Yeah. And, it, and like, I guess you were getting what you yeah. paid for on that one. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was just, and then anyway, but, but we were just, it was available and it was what we had access to. So I did the best I could at the time with what I had. And I don't really, you know, I don't, I don't have a lot of creative regrets because I just think we, anything that seemed like a problem, we tried to fix the best we could and, and, yeah. you know, and, and, and we were aware at the time of all of that stuff. And, and when I go back now, I'm like, you know, oh, well, like I could have polished the whatever the, we could have implemented like distance attenuation better on these, whatever. And, you know, all these sounds are good. Could, could be, we could have like treated this a little differently, but, but, you know, it, we just hadn't learned how to do that yet. I love and how I, at peace you are with that. Cause that yeah. stuff does drive me insane. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I really, I just yeah. literally a week, not even a week ago, I was preparing some music for this concert and there's some sections of journey that we're going to do that we've never done in mm. concert before. And when I was kind of going through it, I was like, man, it's kind of a three part section and I realized I I made a fundamental error in how it's built in yeah. the in the score in yeah. the game and I and so I it's like if you think of it as section A B and C for this concert I'm doing it as A C B oh because I was like it, it it ends in the middle and then there's just like this weird afterthought and yeah. I I was like how did I ever how have I gone this long and not realized how broken this piece uh-huh, is uh-huh. and and this you know that's on that's on something that <clears throat> you know has gotten it's it's made the rounds yeah. um and i always wonder about other people especially with their music so like yeah. for example in the concert last night <clears throat> yeah you know it ran the gamut from stuff you've written very recently to yeah. obviously going all the way back yeah. to the beginning yeah. and did, did any of that ever feel that way to you like you know because you're also writing the lyrics which is worth yes. pointing out yeah. do you ever find yourself wanting to just tweak a word here or there or a chord or a little part of the melody or something like that where you think you know it worked fine. It's not that it's bad, but maybe, or do you have the same attitude as with the, all the other sound design? Like, well, it's reflective of where we were and we did the best we could. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's similar to that attitude. I think for the music stuff, I'm like still kind of happy with how it turned out and don't, I'm, I'm sort of more than at peace with it. I'm like, I'm happy with how that came out and I don't, it's not really, I don't feel like it's my place to even revisit that. I don't want to like George Lucas it, you know? <laughs> Add the Imperial Walkers yeah, to just build like, the wall. Put like CG stuff in front of the <laughs> stuff people like, um, you know, so because it's not, you know, I mean, of course, yeah, I mean, performing a thing live, you can embellish and you can add stuff and whatever. I mean, and and of course, we really, I think we reimagined a lot of the pieces pretty significantly for the, the way oh, we God, did it last yeah. night, you know, so, so I'm pleased to do that. But I think the sort of the essence of the thing I want to try and preserve as best I can, because I'm happy with how it came out. And, you know, it seems to have resonated with people and I don't want to like step on that um to the best of my ability you know so uh not not to say that my music is star wars but <laughs> you know <laughs> not to not to presume that it's like essential to a generation of people <laughs> i don't know man there were people that that in that signing line last night you know and i'm sure there for every person there's probably been tenfold that number of emails or tweets or whatever um who they don't i mean Yes, there's lots of folks that say this was awesome. And there's lots of folks that say this meant a lot to me. And then and then some subset, you know, each each pool gets smaller and smaller, yeah. but they're not small numbers yeah. that, you know, say, oh, you know, I was having a crap week and this lifted up my spirits yeah. all the way yeah. through to like, you know, I, I was at the end of my life. Yeah. Like I didn't know where to go. Yeah. I didn't know what to do. Yeah. I was crippled with depression yeah. or trauma or whatever. And this was my lifeline. Yeah. I mean, there were, I heard that multiple times yeah. last night from, yeah. from a random, you know, sampling of a few thousand people, yeah. who, you know, of those that then made it through the line and then chose to share something like that. So yeah. we're like narrowing down from yeah. a larger pool, I'm sure of it, who, so yeah, you know, it's not Star Wars, but not for difference in quality, I would say. It's just different uh, because sure. <laughs> it has reached people in ways that to me is the apex of what we aspire to. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's not about yeah. awards. It's not even about sales. It's just the idea that it 
it affected someone in a way that nothing else could reach them. That, you, you were like, yeah. became part of their life's story. That is an un, yeah, unbelievable thing to hear. Every time I hear it, I'm just like, I'm, you know, I'm just, it's the biggest compliment one can be paid. It's just, yeah, it's, it's amazing. And I don't fully believe or understand how that's possible still, <laughs> but it's. Or like, on the, on the happier side, also, <clears throat> there was someone last night who said, we went down the aisle yeah. at our wedding yes, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to uh, paper boats. Yeah. To paper boats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's paper boats. Yeah. Uh, um, it's just amazing. Yeah. No, it's incredible to hear that kind of thing. I'm really like, I'm always blown away by that stuff. And, and it's just all, I never, I never imagined in a million years you know, when, you know, the, the, the week before Bastion came out and the week after Bastion came out are like totally different times. Two chapters of your Two life. Ta- yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and the response to the music right away for Bastion was just like, just shocking. To what me. was your impression? What was your, um, did you have any guesses about what the reaction to the game? Did you feel like, oh, this is going to be a hit. We've made something amazing. Or was oh. it just like, I have no idea what's going to happen. It was the second one. We had no idea what was going to happen. We 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 liked it. We thought it was cool. We've heard we had heard we'd seen people react in a really positive way. We'd gotten some playtest feedback that was like mostly positive, like mixed. You know, really mixed. Yeah, I mean, some people liked it. Some people were like, you know, yeah, it's cool. You know, it was like kind of medium reactions and some positive reactions. And so we, yeah, we didn't know what to expect. You know, and and I think when we finally when it dropped and. And, and even right away, you know, we talked about this, uh, we did a panel yesterday and, and Greg talked about this a little bit. It's just like, even when the game came out, it wasn't like a smash hit right away. It, it had like a slow burn, you know? I forgot that. Yeah, it was like, it did pretty, pretty, you know, did decently on, on Xbox Live Arcade and then and then it came to Steam about a month later and started doing okay. And then, then there were some sales later in the year and, and people, and it just kind of kept bubbling up and people, you know, and then it just kind of snowballed a little bit and, and sort of before we were already sort of well into working on transistor by the time we realized that bastion had sort of become kind of a hit uh like and we didn't very slowly yeah i mean the response from people was great you know but but yeah it wasn't like a hit right away or anything um but but the response to the music and people's reactions to the aesthetics and the narration and, and different aspects of the game, the story and all that um, was was phenomenal. I mean, and, and and you know, I was sort of planning to do a soundtrack eventually. You know, it's like yeah. yeah, I should probably make a soundtrack for this. But then, like, day the game came out, everyone's like, where and how soundtrack when? Like, <laughs> you know, I was like, oh geez, okay, I'm gonna, I guess I better do this. So I went and, like, I wanted to put another song on the. I wanted to do something special for the soundtrack, so I wrote um, the Pantheon and had mm. Logan come over. I wrote him basically a Tom Waits song that he could come and sing. Yeah, uh, and uh, I had Logan come over and sing that, and I got that together, like mastered the soundtrack myself. Just I don't know how to do that. I was like, here, y'all, <laughs> make it louder, <laughs> make it louder, that's, yeah, that's make it all, that make means. it all kind of the same amount of loud. Yeah, and then and then that's what I did, and then and we like found a. You know, I worked with a CD manufacturer and like got mm. all that squared away. We just like figured out how to do all that. And we like ordered a run of 2000 CDs um, and then they sold out and we ordered another run of 2000 CDs and those sold out. And Logan and I just spent like, like maybe three weeks, two weeks, like in my Brooklyn apartment, just like filled stacked to the ceiling with like mailers and CDs, just like (laughs) addressing them, like figuring out how to do all that stuff. And just taking like a wheelbarrow to the post office down the street (laughs) and like dropping off. I mean, it was like, yeah, we got through like all of the Larry Sanders show on Netflix, I believe while we were, (laughs) while we were doing that. And then like half of Twin Peaks and that's so funny. Yeah. We just, and then we'd go to lunch and have, you know, we like split a donut because we were watching Twin Peaks and we like needed a donut after watching Twin That's Peaks. That's so funny. Anyway, but yeah, no, it was, I mean, it was crazy. It was just like such a night and day, like the week before, the week after. Totally, totally different. I mean, it was, uh, it was crazy. So, and I just still don't, I mean. Yeah, it's hard I to do process. Not, do not take that for granted and it's, it's crazy. It's, no, it's obvious that you, that you don't. Uh, and it last night on display, um, it was, it was, it was, a, it walked the line very well of like, you had you confidently enjoyed last night as look what has been made. Yeah. You know, look what's been built. Yep. 
Um, and we're proud of this, but it also wasn't like this arrogance, you know, <laughs> you're all here to kiss my feet and get in line. Uh, it was amazing. Um, and some, something else related to that, um, is at dinner afterward, Amir yep. made an interesting comment, yep. uh, where he said that it was almost emotionally overwhelming for yeah, him yeah. because these songs are attached to kind of the emotional high points of the game. Yeah. And if you think of it like this graph that has all these peaks and valleys, yeah. we kind of squished all the peaks into one <laughs> continuous thing and, and yeah. skipped all the interstitial <laughs> lulls that you kind of need. Yeah. And I hadn't been thinking of it through that lens when I realized, yeah, like for, for the diehards yeah. who've played all the games yeah. and know these inside yeah. and out, um, it was just like this tidal wave of emotion. Yeah. And so it got me thinking after I after he said that, um, another one of the things that's just so mind-blowing about this team coming together and the fact that it everyone just knew each other yeah. Um is the fact that leaning on songs specifically is not that typical in games. Yeah. Like I've done it a few times and it always feels like this extreme novelty. Yeah. And you guys do it as if it's just like, that's just how games are. It's just, it's like borderline musical theater. Yeah. Um, yeah. And th that's just an accepted part of the vocabulary of super giant yeah. brand almost. Yeah. Um, was that just how did that happen? Yeah. Is that something that was discussed and then experimented with, or just like, this is how we did it because it's just how you make games. Apparently it was, it was a specific ambition I had uh, part. Did you have to like kind of sell them on no, that? No, not or? at all. No, not at all. I mean, it was just like, I mean, a lot of the approach to Bastion in particular was what are all of the strengths of all the people working on this game, you know, and my background was songwriting. So yeah. I'm like, well, I should write a song. I should write some songs. Um, because I, I can do that. I know I can do that. Um, so, and I, I personally had been, I'd really enjoyed songs in other games that were used, you know, mostly for sort of like end credits music or sort of sure. kind of fun co comedic effect, you know, the end of portal, spectacular, yeah, yeah. wonderful ending one song. Of, truly Jonathan, one of the Jonathan all Colton. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so I, and play, having played that recently and, and kind of, and then plants for zombies, that fun little pop song at the end, uh, uh, the zombie Laura, on my lawn. Laura Shigahara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's, you know, I love all that stuff. But I, w I thought, well, let's, I want to do something that's like not for comedic effect that actually helps enhance the emotion of this game. But um, it's also interwoven narratively. Yeah. It's not, yeah. it's not a graft over top that like yeah. another great song could have also done. I yeah, mean, yeah, it's yeah. really in there. Yeah. I mean, I, and I wanted them to be in world. You know, that was another, another goal was to, to have it be like, to feel like part of the fabric of the world um, and to reinforce the tone and to, you know, help place you in this place and immerse you more fully. Um, and that was a, that was a goal. That was like a stated goal of mine, like from basically beginning, I kind of brainstormed like, well, what do I want to do with this music? I want to, it has to be something that I can do. That is a requirement that I can implement by myself and do it basically all alone with mm -hmm. very little help <laughs> or, or at least no money. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and I, uh, the other the other aspect of it was you know what um i want to write a song or two i want to have some i want to have a song in this game you know because i really i really appreciate how those are in other games i've those have made a big impression on me I, I would like to have that kind of thing but for it to try a spin on it and then another aspect of it was i wanted to try to do something stylistically that i hadn't personally heard mm. in games I wanted to try to to sort of do like a mashup y thing. Um partially because I knew I'd be able to execute something like that. I wouldn't be able to execute something orchestral. I wouldn't be able to execute something that was like a rock full rock thing because I just didn't have the means to record that properly at the yeah, time. I see. Uh, -huh. uh I wouldn't be able to execute something that was purely like electronic just because I didn't and I also didn't really want to. Right. Um, just because I didn't really know how to do that and I didn't feel like that was my wheelhouse. Right, sure. Um, but I I had never I felt like I had never really heard a thing that sort of combined a lot of that stuff in a in a way that, that I was thinking about. So that was another of my sort of goals at, at the outset. And and to sort of guide the whole thing because 
mostly as a crutch because I didn't know how to do it any other way. I didn't have mm -hmm. like a composing vocabulary. I didn't know how to do any of that was I like, well, I figure if I just sort of make a genre <laughs> of music, <laughs> then, <laughs> then I can tie all the stuff in the game together in some way by having it all just kind of be that genre. Um, yeah, it's simple. <laughs> Anybody could do that when if they I just cared out, enough. When I say it out loud in that way, I guess it seems crazy. You, but well, yeah, you can finally appreciate it now the way the rest of us uh, do. It's like, good God! But 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 especially it, because you know, again, not to just keep being like this Darren super fan, <laughs> but the um, uh, hearing the the songs stripped of all of their original production, where we're just retaining. In some cases, purely just the vocal line. Yeah. Um, or in most of them, you know, the vocals and whatever the essence of the harmony was. Yeah. And that's basically it. Yeah. Some gestures, you yeah. know, like the snare drum. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. A yeah, similar yeah. pattern yeah. is what you do. That. But by and large, we're, we're really heavily reconceiving them. Yeah. And adding instrumental interludes between, you know, statements of the verse and that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the songs never lose their essence uh, at all. They, it's still loud and, and proud. And that is so many songs uh, seem great. You listen to them. They're super satisfying and emotionally whatever. But if you try to do that, they quickly fall apart. And you realize it's just so interwoven with the production mm -hmm. and, you know, the, the kind of sonic impact. Yeah. And that's not to dismiss production. That's an amazing yeah. art. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. like. To me, the essence of songwriting yeah. as an art yeah. is about making something that can transcend, you know, like some, you know, like, like Mad World. You yeah. go, you oh, go yeah, yeah. on YouTube and you can yeah. find 50 million covers yes. in every conceivable genre. Yep. And the song never stops being Mad yeah. World in this yeah. instantly yep. graspable way. Yeah. And last night, you know, preparing for this show um, uh, and then witnessing the audience's reaction to it last night. It's yeah. like, you really are doing that. You're, you're like, you said, you're kind of, you're kind of coaxing new genres out of this mashup <laughs> of existing genres. Um, and, uh, but yet the bones of it are also so strong. Um, it's, I don't even, I'm not even asking mm. you anything. I'm just, <laughs> thank you. I just, I'm just so in awe of it because I, and I, and I, it's <clears> funny, <throat> I, I've said this already 50 times in the last week, but I, I really was a fan for the last eight years or whatever. Uh, but I didn't actually really see how sophisticated a lot of these were. And, to, and, and the funny thing is that I think you just do it. I think you just, you just sit down and you like pick up your guitar and you play a chord and you sing and you go, yeah, that works. And write it down basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause it feels, yeah. I remember Leonard Bernstein once said no. that all great art, you know, we spend like, you know, someone like him would spend a, a year writing a symphony. Yeah. But, when an audience hears it, it should feel spontaneous as yeah. though it's being written right then. It yes. shouldn't feel yeah, like yeah, yeah. this labored, calculated, yeah. like, aha, they're going to love this. I'm going <laughs> to yeah, go yeah, to yeah. the third here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> and uh, you have that quality. It seems to just, it just seems as though you almost like you improvised it, but it's, it's written with in a way. And so that's why I was just no. in awe that, that these games are an inordinate platform for that style of musical expression. So it's in a way, it would have been very surprising if I asked, you know, do you ever want to leave your job and go be <laughs> freelance? Cause uh, it just yeah. seems like your personality. It must, it must be, uh, I can phrase this one as a question. Sure. Sure. Instead of just talking at you about you. Um, it seems to me, it's kind of like when two people are in a room and they get along great and they do great work together, yeah. their, 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 their positive habits will kind of, reinforce in the other yeah so it, is it a stretch to say that given how emotionally and narratively successful the th what you're doing is in their games that now super giant is almost designing trying to find those moments to give you that platform as well like you're all in this dance together of like hey you do amazing art so we want to create a game that's going to give you more of a chance because we saw what worked so much before and everyone's leaning harder into those mutual strengths. Is I mean, that, I, I think to some degree we always do that. It's, you but know, you're also learning so much. In yeah. The last yeah. No, years. for sure. Sure. For sure. I mean, I, I think, I think part of it is, you know, a lot of, a lot of one of our things that we do just for practical reasons because of scope and the way it's just going to, the way it works out, uh, for, from a production standpoint is, you know, leaning into everybody's strengths is just, 
it's just sort of the best practice. Of you course. Know? Uh, and so, uh, of course, you pay attention to the things that are successful in previous games, and and but also in a lot of ways, you know, each game is a sort of a response to the last one that, that we're doing and trying. We're always trying to try new things, um, and so of course we're looking for excuses. I mean, I'm you know we're always looking for moments, trying to have emotional moments, um, excuses for there to be music and songs, you know, uh, in that that have an emotional uh, impact impact and have a have the space to have that. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I would say that, that we're, we're all trying to allow everybody to shine their brightest, you know, by, by, by the way we sort of organize the work and, and what we're all trying to do creatively. I think it's, everybody's trying to, you know, put their best work out all the time. And, and, and of course, you know, for me personally, I am absolutely inspired to work with such amazing, talented human beings because, you know, I look at, you know, Jen's art and I'm like, geez, I better make something good. You know, <laughs> God, look at that, you know, and um, I read Greg's writing. I'm like, Jesus, I got to, oh, I got to live up to that emotional beat, you know, and, and to that end, actually, <clears throat> if, if you don't mind me jumping in yeah. the, the, um, um, I ask having done it already 50 yeah. times, but yeah. the, uh, specifically on the subject of the writing. Yeah. You know, you're also writing lyrics. Yeah. And so there's a real yeah. natural dovetailing there. Yeah. Are you drawing from his words in yes. those? And does he ever ping his writing off of you? Or are you kind of just by logistic purposes kind of chasing behind his writing process? Yeah. Usually what, what will happen is Greg will have written like a massive world document and all sorts of stuff that doesn't make it into the game that is but but is reference Bible, material yeah. for us um, if we want it. And for him, I think, from for to like aid in his writing mostly. Of um, and I, when writing songs, will definitely will, like totally use all that stuff, um, to just pull from and like, especially when I'm, you know, because I'm for the most part trying to make all of the music be in world. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I have references to like stuff that is only referenced in the, <laughs> you know, yeah, his world right. doc that I'll put in the songs. Like Cimmerillion. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. And, and so, so definitely I, I pull heavily from, you know, from the, 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 all the documentation that Greg had, works up and, and everything, all the sort of wealth of amazing lore stuff that just right. exists and I can I can use for for my creative purposes. And do are you ever weighing in um like I don't know if they, you know, kind of do sort of team stand up type things where are you are you ever kind of throwing in your two cents on mechanics and design and Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean everybody just about everybody on team like play tests and gives feedback if they have it. And, and all of that is, you know, either, either, you know, it's accepted, acknowledged, generates a task, whatever, you know, it, mm -hmm. it, it's all valuable and everybody and our team is small enough that, you know, everybody's voice can be heard. And, and, um, and for sure, no, I, 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 uh, play the games a ton and give feedback whenever I have it and find, you know, send bugs and do all the whole, the whole shebang. So then what about the flip? Because there's always the joke that everybody knows what they do yeah. plus music yeah, and everyone's got an opinion. Um, so how often are you receiving feedback from the team at large about this music? Like almost never. Really? Yeah. 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 I just kind of put the music in and I'll get like thumbs ups, you know, <laughs> emojis on Slack. Yeah, I'll get emojis on Slack. I'm like, here's the new piece. i like, like devil horn, emo, you know, <laughs> like, like a, wow, that's yeah. nuts. No, it's it's really like I don't know. Okay, I mean, you actually do have a fictional, a fictionally sort of ideal situation <laughs> in so many ways. Although, actually, I really personally like. Yeah. I really like getting feedback. Yeah, that, that stretches me to. Cause I ask also because yeah. I'm I'm remembering when we did a panel at GDC together, yeah. the composer confessions panel. Yeah, yeah. and your confession yes. was. I learned to never finish – to send unfinished yeah, work. Yeah, never send unfinished work, yeah. Because feedbacks from unfinished work is obviously going to be so messed up. Yeah. It's tripping on the unfinished nature yeah. of it and not the like content itself. Yeah, like the feedback that I get from that will be less usable yeah. because – It's just not targeting and, a real thing. Yeah, and it's just sort of wasting everybody's time a little bit because – their time is wasted by generating and giving me the feedback and my time is wasted by trying to parse the kind of not super, not a hundred percent useful feedback because it's responding to aspects that are unfinished and no one else can hear the rest of the thing that I plan to do except yeah, exactly. me. So 
I may as well just do the whole thing. And then, cause it doesn't, you know, I'm, I've gotten to, to a point in the production in production where I can do it like fairly quickly. So it's just worth it for me to sort of take it to as a hundred close to a hundred percent as I can. Has there ever been like a, just a full misfire where you wrote something, whether it's a song or even just a piece of incidental score or something where uh, they, or you after a beat said, this has to be totally scrapped. No, I mean, because the point at which I identify that is before I finish it, usually. Um, you know what I mean? Like, I've, I've, gotten, I've started pieces and been like, nah, you know, but that's usually pretty early for me. Like, if, if I go far enough along with a piece to kind of be enthusiastic enough about it to finish it, then then I think it's going to – we'll have a spot. And, and, and even if it's not appropriate for my – like, where I originally intended to place it in the game, we'll find a use for it. Um, yeah, is, is our approach. So, so, um, there were a couple of instances on transistor specifically where I had made a piece early and what, and like, it's, I hadn't found the sound of the game yet. Mm -hmm. And I went back and revised them to sort of fit more with the aesthetic of the music. See, yeah. But, but aside from that, uh, basically, no, I haven't, I haven't really scrapped finished things, uh, generally for the, for the game stuff, uh, as far as I can remember. That is mind boggling to me. <laughs> I, I have mercilessly done that so many times. Yeah. That it's just un uh, my yeah. brain can't. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, just a couple last things yeah. I'm curious yeah, about. Yeah. Um, is there any. Uh, I, I, it's already quite clear and with good reason that you're in this for the long haul oh, yeah. with Super Giant. Yes. And as long as they're around. You plan to stick around. That is, and that seems it. to be a marriage made in heaven. That's yeah. it's almost too perfect to fully believe. <laughs> yeah, um, I agree, and I'm starting not to. Yeah, um, but to the extent it's possible to set that aside, is there any kind of grand uh, musical ambition that you have that sort of in one day out you want to go do? Whether it's you know write a musical or do another solo album or world tour with the super giant orchestra or you know like is there something that 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 potentially i guess the the more interesting way to phrase it is that, is there anything that excites you in the back of your mind that would kind of necessitate a hiatus or something or or um you know putting a pause saying you know guys I'll, i'm gonna come i'm gonna leave for six months or something like that i don't some unconquered mountain <clears throat> that excites you not enough to to take a break for that long. I, I, I like, I just think the work at super giants too much fun and too like, I don't know that because we have no, I don't, I'm one of the few people now at super giant that has like no redundancy, meaning like I'm the only person there that does what I do. Oh yeah. We have like, now we have like two 2d artists and now we have like two, you know, yeah, we have yeah. like a modeler and an anime. So there's like a, some more redundancy now. So like someone can, go on paternity or whatever and have a, you know, right. and it doesn't and, bottleneck. Yeah. It doesn't bottleneck. So, so I, I feel like if I went away, um, I, no one doesn't, there wouldn't be anybody making, making music. So, um, uh, so, so, uh, perhaps for, the only flaw in their design. Is, no, it's is fine. It, I mean, it's totally fine. Like I love it. I, I don't want to. And so, so I don't think I would want to get away from it for that long. I don't, I really don't because it's so, it's just so such a dream uh, to do it. And, and, but of course uh, there's stuff I'd like to do for fun stuff, just stuff I've never done. I mean that the, the concert last night was a perfect example of something that was like, I had never done anything like that. And I didn't think I would ever do anything like that up until like three months ago when we started talking about it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, I, now that, now that we did, I was like, oh, that was awesome. I'd like to do something like that again. That'd be fun. Or, you know, of course, I'd love to make an album with, a, with my band. You know, I'd love to do, you know, <clears throat> but but I feel like that's all the kind of stuff that can be squeezed in in the cracks between the super giant work is sort of my, right. my feeling, you know, and, and that's that's the kind of stuff that I'm interested in doing. I mean, a tour would be fun, but, I, you know, it would have to be like a two week tour. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't go on the six week, tour, a six month tour. And I, and I have a, like a family and a, you know, the whole thing. I wouldn't want to be gone for that long for, for, for those reasons. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I think, I think that the, yeah, the answer is not, uh, no, basically <laughs> I, I don't want to take six months Happy off. where I am. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's, uh, <clears throat> it, it is truly amazing. It's funny how contrasting, 
and yet not that is from the conversation yesterday with Danny B. Yeah. Uh, because his arc has been so different than a yeah. lot of people's. You know, he basically conquered the indie uh, freelance composer yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, and then was like, now I'm going to move to Canada and work nine to five as an in-house guy for a developer. And yeah. it was like such a an unusual move but it re but reflective of a lot of the same things where it was like yeah. i actually feel so satisfied with this group that i can spend all my time with them yeah um and it's truly amazing it's very atypical amongst composers yeah I, I, not even i don't know that that sentiment is atypical it's just those opportunities are extraordinarily rare. yes and i i absolutely realize that and sort of count my blessings uh you know when you you tell me about how you're working on the million th like hunting for you know for trying to find the next thing and i'm like i just get like start my palpitations <laughs> i was like oh my god my heart starts beating uh, fast see, so, it's, you know it's funny because i it's it, you have to i mean we're we're both kind of we've sifted through uh the filters to to end up in our sweet spot because yeah. i i really enjoy the, that dance yeah. you know i enjoy yeah. those prospective meetings and yeah. seeing like is this going to be a good fit? Can we go off and work really hard for the next six months or yeah. a year or two years yeah. and make something? And then when it's done, it's like, okay, who else is out there? You yeah. know? Or, or yeah. Are, are you ready to do something again straight away? That kind of thing. And yeah. I mean, I, the closest experience that I've probably had, and it's really fundamentally different, but working with the Banner Saga team where yeah. it was very closely for three games in a row yeah. where it was like seven years or something, yeah, six yeah. years wow. uh, for the trilogy. Um, and I'm likewise, I'm the only guy – doing my department yes. and, and to the point where they also basically never gave feedback because yes. it was like, if, if you're happy with it, yeah. you're, you're the expert. Yeah. Like, you're the you're, guy. Yeah. 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 You're here to be the person who can sign off on it yes. just as much as you are to write it. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and so there, I was never in house, but it's the closest I've come and I get that. It was an amazing experience. Yeah. So tying it all together then. Yes. Yeah. Tell me about being a space camp counselor. Yeah, because well, everybody needs to know about <clears throat> sure in the Darren yeah. under the hood in the summer of two thousand five, I applied to be a space camp counselor at Space Camp Turkey, ha! in Turkey, the country of Turkey. It was an American space camp in Turkey for some reason, and sounds uh, like a black site. <clears throat> uh, yeah, like, it was really weird. Um, sort of maybe we're holding prisoners who had never no, been charged with anything. No, it was super weird, but it was really fun. And I went and spent two months in Turkey. And then I backpacked around Europe for four months afterwards and took a semester off of college. And, what is and, Turkish space camp like? Who are the, who are the kit, like the, whatever the, so there's the, inter international the campers. Kids. There's international kids. There's like kids from like American international schools in the, in the right. area. Kids of there's, diplomats and, and stuff. And there's like kids that are slightly older than the kids in America who would attend the space camp program who are have like a good English as a second language understanding. Mm. And and so it was like kids, everybody, you know, I did the English program, obviously. There was a Turkish program there as well that had Turkish counselors. Wow. Um, how big is this? How big? Oh, gosh. Like student, like number of people? I have no idea. I, I, but I mean, is it a bit? They were just in round there terms. Were probably like 10, thing, there were probably like 10 to 12 American counselors or something like okay, that. So it's not huge. Yeah. But it's, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I think something like that. 12, maybe something like that. Yeah, maybe 20... And were you, what year did you say this was? 2005. So this was like in the middle of college. I took a semester off, yeah. I took a semester off of college to backpack around Europe, essentially. I did this over the summer, and then the, that following semester just kind of, um, wow. you know, I was I like... Did used... you make space camp music with Turkish kids? I did. So I did not with Turkish kids, but I did make... I did write a song um, about the Mercury 7 to teach, to teach Turkish children about the U.S. space program. <laughs> You're such a propagandist. Uh, no, I mean, uh, that was, yeah. And it wasn't just Turkish children. It was all sorts of children. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, those kinds of experiences, I think it's impossible to overstate how much those kinds of things can really get under your skin and influence yes. your, you know, it's like I always tell composers, if I could give you one piece of advice, in a way, it's to stop writing music and go live. Yeah. And go be interesting. Go do cool stuff. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. you don't, there's so much you can do. You don't need money. Yep. You don't need privilege or access yeah, yeah, there's yeah. so much that can be done by just showing up yeah um yeah. and um and you know but that's a big leap and it's very scary yeah for a lot of folks for sure and, and it's so much easier to just stay inside your room and and, <laughs> yeah. and trying to make logic work or whatever. yeah 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 and, and i and i think but but someone like you reflects you know the desire the the, the writing reflects having sort of made interesting life choices <laughs> 
uh, if yeah. I may. Not, yeah. not that I have not that I have figured out exactly how Turkish space camp caused build that wall, but uh, I'm sure I'll find it. I well, you know, very directly, like I on Hades, I'm using like tons of Mediterranean, like Turkish, Greek instruments that I was exposed to directly just from my time over there. Wow. Um, I bought a Balama, which is like a thing that I, I actually bought one in Turkey and then like couldn't get it back to the US. So I had to let it go there. And so I, but I, re, <laughs> I rebought one just for this game. And then I looked up like, what are some crazy, I bought a Lavta and a Bazooki and uh, all sorts of like oh, nice. cool things that I saw and got to like just interact with a little bit while I was over there that had like weird, interesting sounds. Um, yeah, bazookis are particularly cool. Yeah, bazookis is really fun. Um, and so yeah, it was, it's been uh, so so just I direct very directly. That's one specific way in which that experience has informed what I'm doing now for sure. I love it. Yeah. Well, congratulations, uh, ten year run. Thank you. And sir. the first of hopefully multiple ten year runs uh, with Super Giant. Like I said last yeah. night, I look forward to the twentieth anniversary. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And hopefully we can go into the studio and um, and do a kind of a proper studio recording of yeah. of those charts from last I, night. I would love that. That'd be awesome. Yeah, it, that'd be so it, much fun. Such a dream. Yeah. Um, for those uh, who've hung in there with us for the last hour and whatever. Yeah. Uh, how can they find you online yes. on social media, etc.? Uh, at Darren Korb on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, supergiantgames.com is the place to go for all that stuff. Uh, you know, Facebook, whatever, whatever you want to do. The new, whole thing. new box set. Uh, oh yes. Oh yeah. You should plug, plug that, I guess. Let's plug some merch oh, here. Plug it. Yeah. So Move some units. I am 8-Bit re is releasing, we're releasing, you know, in partnership with them, a 12 disc plus a seven inch single vinyl collection of like all the music from all the games. Um, so it's, it's the music. It's all the soundtracks plus some bonus material we've never released before on vinyl, including the extended transistor stuff, the white loot and the black mandolin from Pyre. And then also there's the Hades sort of seven inch single with two, two tracks from Hades. Yeah, I think you're probably the first composer ever to have a vinyl <laughs> release of an unfinished, unreleased <laughs> score. You're, I love that you're like, we've come so far that I'm just going to go ahead and be ahead of the curve on this one. I mean, we're, and we're doing the, you know, we're doing the Haiti soundtrack all. We're releasing them as singles as they come out, like on Spotify yeah, and stuff. I've never seen yeah. anybody do that before. I mean, How's the reaction to that, Ben? Good. I mean, it's, people want to buy it now, but I'm like, well, we don't want to sell it yet because the soundtrack's not done and we don't want to make people rebuy. You know, we like want you to not, because yeah. we, we want to release a packaged soundtrack when it's out, but it's just, there's, I'm like writing a bunch more music still. So don't, so wait, please. So we're releasing it on, you know, it's on Spotify and YouTube and we're just like letting, you know, trying to allow people to have access to it. For but it's free. a fascinating form of almost like advanced marketing as well. Cause you're, yeah. you're basically giving something for people to latch onto and go into with an experience because it's very different. If you, if you watch a movie, for example, having yeah. already heard the score yeah. and then there's this one moment that really spoke to you yeah. and then that moment hits, yeah. you have a very different relationship to it yeah. than if all of that was fresh. Yeah. So it's going to be really interesting. What's the nature again of the, I know we were already wrapping up yeah. back into it. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. What's the nature of the, um, the kind of open access development of the game that, cause people are able yeah. to start dipping their toes in the gameplay too. right? Oh yeah. No, it's, I mean, it's, it's really access that we have, the full game loop now we've done six big updates since it it launched into early access at hades in last december and you know we we have you know it's going to ship 1.0 in the second half of next year so we have a lot more development to go and every so the game launched with 14 pieces of music and now there are 22 um that have you know so the subsequent pieces have been post release post post early access launch um and yeah, we're just sort of adding to a playlist essentially every time a track comes out. And 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 the, crazy. the sort of thinking behind that was, you know, in our experience, you know, people when a game the game comes out, people will sort of just like mine it for the music and put it up on YouTube themselves anyway. I was like, well, we just should do that. We, yeah. sh we should just do yeah, that because we should do it right, master it, get it all, you know. Um, so anyway, we're, that's kind of the, the idea. I'm mean, like, I knew I wanted to release the music as we went somehow. I thought for a second, well, maybe we should do volumes or something, but, but I, I we ended up settling on singles. Just like dozens of singles. Yeah. Just singles because why not? You know, um, it's good enough for Drake, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we could do it too. Um, oh man. Well, that's awesome. So yeah. the I am eight bit box set, um, and the 
constantly updated Hades Spotify playlist. Yes. Uh, that's incredible. Yep. I could keep going forever. We haven't even <laughs> talked about Star Wars other than a brief little tap on George I Lucas. I think that was just the perfect amount to talk about Star Wars for I, this context. I don't know. It's, such, it's so part of our vocabulary together, but uh, it's all right. We'll leave that, that for could the, be That could be our special thing. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, like the cuddling we're about to do for our photo op. Um, well, thank you, man. This was awesome. Congrats again. Last night was – I will never forget last night. Same, it was, it was, same here. I, I so rarely am in a position to fully – I had a job to do. Yeah. But my job principally, conceptually, was to celebrate your work. No. I'm ne I had zero of my own work uh, <laughs> and that's uh, – usually that is at least some component of that. Yeah. And so it was such a privilege to be able to just get up there in front of those musicians and in front of that, that gigantic, excited audience and say, let's all bask <laughs> in uh, – 10 years worth of amazing music. So thank you again for yeah. inviting me to be part of it. I honestly couldn't have done it without you. So thank you so much for your contribution. It was, it was a delight. A true joy. Well, thanks for this again. And let's go finish off our PAX 2019. Let's do it. Thank you for joining us for the Game Maker's Notebook. For more information on the Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences, our podcasts, and our other initiatives, please visit www.interactive.org.